Welcome to Pod Me If You Can, I'm David Farrell. Today's film is Clock Watchers, starring Lisa Kudrow, Tony Collette, and Parker Posey. Pod Me If You Can, movie reviews. Clock Watchers, from 1997, is a temporary film about temporary friendships with temp workers in a boring, spacious office setting. You know, they're trying to, as they put it, look busy when there's nothing to do. They never really explain anything to temps because they figure you're not going to be around long enough. They're glorified seat fillers, the four girls in our film, and uh, sometimes they're just there to make an office look busier. As they put it, 50% of the job is lunch. Our main girls are Iris, played by Tony Collette, who's a timid, frumpy, shy uh, employee who literally has no voice. She can't speak above a whisper when we meet her at the start of this film, which is lucky because she has voiceover to tell us her feelings. We meet Paula, played by Lisa Kudrow, who's flirty and fun and likes men, and um, she's a wannabe actress, and she gets to uh, attempt to use some of those skills in her day-to-day life. Margaret, played by Parker Posey, is rebellious and sassy. She's been there the longest as a temp, and she's quite jaded because of the amount of time she's been there without a permanent job. We also meet Jane, played by Alana Eubach. She's engaged, but the girls are really suspicious that she might be getting cheated on. We only see her fiancé sitting in a car waiting to pick her up and things like that, so it's difficult and one-sided and uh, tough to kind of get a read on her relationship. Uh, He... uh, they've been going out forever, and he buys her lots of gifts, is uh, the gist of what we we get from them. Iris gets told by a fortune teller not to tiptoe through her life and that she needs to make her mark. She has a subplot with her dad. He's trying to get her a job in sales and uh, she's really reluctant because of her confidence levels. And um, throughout the events of the film, she gains more and more confidence through having these friendships. There's a new girl named Cleo, played by Helen Fitzpatrick. She gets an assistant job, which is really permanent, and highly desirable for the temps. She leapfrogs uh, Parker Posey's character, Margaret, and, um, you know, it's highly desirable. that The main four girls treat her like trash. They're quite angry about it because who is she to get this permanent job? And, uh, you know, having applied for a job, actually got it. So she comes in really as an outsider to their group. The presence of Cleo makes the four girls realise how good friends they are. And, um... I've got to assume that a permanent job in this environment means benefits, you know, uh, dental and things like that, and that's why they're so desirable. Also because they're treated like trash as temps, so, um, you know, they, they want that foot in the door in the workplace. Someone is stealing from, uh, from other colleagues, and at first it's paperweights and umbrellas and small stuff. Um, some money gets stolen from a coffee tin, a mug goes missing, The girls start to doubt each other, and as the temps are treated differently to the full-time staff, it becomes quite noticeable there's an us-and-them mentality. The film is shot like a prison film at times, a feeling people who work in offices know all too well. This theft storyline dominates the film. Who is stealing these desk items? It escalates when somebody's presentation goes missing, and it's, you know, due very soon. There's mistrust with the temps, and it actually leads to management changing the seating arrangement so that the temps are all sitting in the middle of the office. It becomes very much like a prison in that they're told not to fraternise, they're split up when they're in groups, it really hurts their friendship, and they start getting interrogated too. There are actually long sequences in the film where no one talks, or our main character is very silent, and we're treated to elevator music at every turn. The film unfortunately has lots of bad voiceover, and unnecessary voiceover. For example, Iris, our lead character played by Tony Collette, says, I fit right in. I liked it there. We were becoming friends. Which we can tell. We've seen that. You've shown us. It's fine. We don't need to double down on voiceover, you know, ramming the point home. There are four options as to who the thief could be. And I won't spoil it here, but I'll list off the uh, top four contenders for you. There's Paula, played by Lisa Kudrow, who's the actress. You know, could she be playing the part? There's Jane, who's paying off an expensive wedding throughout the film. Cleo, the new girl, 
who just started when the stealing began, or Margaret, played by Parker Posey, who steals multiple times during the film. Uh, early in the film we see her take shot glasses from a bar, and uh, she folds clothes under other clothes in a department store as well. Uh, people feel invisible, and she points out that people just want to be noticed, but it's difficult because she really doesn't have any personality that shines through here. Uh, it's very temporary, uh, her place in this world, and she doesn't make any effort to make more friends when her friends leave the film. There are these filler scenes, like Lisa Kudrow's character is practicing acting on the bus. She does happy, and Iris says, that's happy. She does sad, and she points out, that's sad. But when she pulls this one face that is later identified as scared, Iris can't tell what it is. Like her character doesn't know what fear looks like or something. It's, it's a very strange, maybe perhaps meta moment um, where we're supposed to, I suppose, get that Iris doesn't know what fear is. I, I just sort of found this to be really filler, but maybe there's something in there. Maybe her character only knows how to be happy or sad and, and hasn't had a situation where she gets scared. Um, the thing is, the whole nature of the world, it's, it's very unfinished as a film because there's little closure, but the film itself is temporary. It reminds me of the single serve friends in Fight Club, you know, the single serve everything, that they're temporary like their jobs, these friendships, they're temporary. And though she, she likes them, she fits in, she feels happy, it's not to last. Inexplicably in this film, they thank five different shoe brands in the credits. I don't know why. They never go and buy shoes. Uh, they don't discuss shoes in any open way, and they don't appear in any branded shoes that I could see. Um, one character mentions that her shoes were stolen, and one man says in one sequence, I like your shoes, but then we're not offered a close-up or any reason to, uh, you know, like the shoes as well. It's just a throwaway comment. And one woman says she keeps a spare set of shoes in her desk. I don't know why shoe brands were thanked in the credits, and if anybody does know, I'd, I'd really be interested, because even when they frame shots in this film, they don't frame the shoes into the shot very often, so I don't know why five shoe brands were thanked in the credits. If anybody knows, let me know. Jamie Kennedy has a cameo in this film, he's delivering mail around the office, he makes no jokes, he is something of a joke in that he's in love with... Uh, Jane, Alani Yubak's character, but she's engaged, and so he just asks her out a few times, even though she's engaged, which is the running joke. Jags, uh, David James Elliott, plays one of the executives. He's hardly in the film, though. He's really there to make a point that he doesn't remember their names, that they're uh, invisible, faceless women that simply get asked to make copies of things. Um, if Also, Deborah Jo Rupp is in the film. Uh, she's the mum from that 70s show. If you want a solid office comedy, you should probably watch Office Space, uh, that would be my preference, or The Office itself, UK or US versions would be fine. This film is much more dramatic than it is funny. Uh, it has a lot of potential and a really solid cast, you know, Parker Posey's pretty good in it, but the story is where it lacks. I didn't really care who the office thief was, and at the end of the film they aren't even friends anymore because they've all moved on. There's one line where she says, soon after Jane left, the wedding was beautiful. I read about it in the newspaper, which means she wasn't even invited to this wedding of her supposed friend, and they spent months together. It's a very inefficient workplace as well, which bothered me, and if the bobs from office space turned up to, you know, run efficiency checks on people, they would have made everybody redundant, because it's unclear what anybody does, and there's so many extra temp staff they don't need. The film ends, though, before we can have that payoff. You know, we've seen the tedious world built, but we don't get the kind of moment where she leaves the world, or like, bursts from her cocoon as a butterfly. We don't really get like a massive payoff. It remains tedious and lifeless sort of till the end. I'll leave you with a quote from the film. Everything is temporary. Everything begins and ends. You can find more from us at podmeifyoucan.com. Thanks for watching. If you like what you see, please hit the subscribe button. Like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. Check out our podcast at www.podmeifyoucan.com.